Kenny John Moxley promo. This dude's just the best. His plane landed last night. He can feel the tension in the air. It feels like a holiday. Everyone showed up to the building early. They all showed up looking nice. It's so important. Look how far we've come, he says. Two years ago, this company was just an idea. I was just a washed up burnout. Here I am, the AEW World Champion. We're taking off. I've been on a collision course with Kenny Omega for this whole time. The two best wrestlers in the world. There's only one thing left to do. Make him go absolutely banana. And he winks and walks off camera. It was awesome. He's I got it. I got to say something about this, by the way. So, as we'll get to, as you all are well aware, we have a new AEW champion. And for many years, I have talked about how I hate these bullshit swerves that don't make sense. I just want my wrestling to make sense. And when this match was over, I was like kicking myself. How did I not see this coming? The moment Kenny Omega said, let's have a gentleman's agreement, no gimmicks, just wrestling. Have I lost it? How the fuck did I not see this coming? It was the perfect finish to turn Kenny Omega heel. This lying asshole. The other thing that somebody pointed out to me, every time that John Moxley has defended the title, he has done a fantastic promo where he calls his shot. Yes. And he always wins exactly the way he says he's going to win. Watch your neck, etc. As was pointed out to me before the show aired by somebody, he never called his shot. He never told us what was going to happen and how he was going to beat John Moxley. Kenny Omega. A Kenny Omega. Every one of the promos was how Omega could win. How What a great match it would be. But not how he was going to win. Yes. And the one time he didn't call his shot, he lost. I don't know if this was by design, but I can't help but notice that that's what happened. Very few things happen in this company by accident. So I would like to think that that was the, the plan. So they had tons of time. The match started, I think, I think a little before, had a little more than 30 minutes to go when it started. And they told us this match is a 60-minute time limit, and TNT has allowed us we will stick through this match through its entirety. So there may have been a 30-minute overrun. So they had all 30 minutes to use. They did not do an overrun, as it turns out. But they had all 30 minutes. They used them all, had a lot of time, and used it well. Two commercial breaks, but the match was long enough to go two commercial breaks. And for the first half of this, I was like, this is good, but I was expecting better. Like, they've had some good action, but nothing... It's exactly what I thought. Memorable has happened. First half was there. Second half was great. So the key is, there's a point where the brawling... It's actually right after the first commercial break, I think, when... Kenny does like a dragon screw in the ropes, another, another one in the guardrail, and starts taking apart the knee. He gets a Kataro Crusher for two, and that's like the first sustained offense anyone's had in the match. He gets one near fall, and then dials it back and just goes into leg working for a while. And Don Callis is awesome on commentary. He's a great commentator, explaining the strategy of Kenny Omega here. Take the base away from John Moxley, the striker. So he will not be able to hit you as hard when his leg is taken out. That makes total sense. I got to say one thing about Kells, too, here. So I knew it happened, obviously, before I watched the show. And how many times have we watched a WWE pay-per-view? And not just WWE, but anywhere, actually. Where somebody comes out and they've got the boo-boo face, as they yes. call it. Yes. Because they're losing and they're pissed off about it. But they're doing their job, and you see it, and the match is over, and you're like, now I know why they fucking look like that before the match. Don Kell said the exact opposite. <laughs> the they, old boy face? When they introduced him the to yippee, commentary, face. He, was the, he was the cat in the birdhouse. Is that the term? It is tonight. No, he wasn't the canary in the cat house. That doesn't work. But anyway, he had a shit-eating grin on his face. He was fucking over the moon. He was so excited. I was yes. like, look at this guy. Look at this fucking guy. And there you go. So Kenny is working Moxley over. And we're, we're now in the third chapter here after the second commercial break. And this is when it gets really, really, really good. And, like, the very first thing they do after, right after the break is Kenny hits his big trademark Superman flying flip dive over the top open. It's awesome. But then he throws Moxley into the ring 
And when he goes to follow up, Moxley catches him, hits him with a paradigm shift. That's his finish. And he lays him out in the middle of the ring. But he does not make a cover. Because Moxley thinks this Kenny Omega bastard is the one who laid him out in the parking lot two weeks ago. And he's not just going to pin this guy the first chance he gets. He goes to get a couple of chairs. And Don Callis is there. As noted, he's a, is a Winnipegian, I believe, or Winnipegger. I'm not sure. But he's, he's from the same area where uh, uh, Kenny Omega is from. Long family history. Trained by Omega's uncle. And so he's outraged that... Moxley has va- uh, violated this gentleman's agreement. Which, by the way, did Moxley ever agree to this? I thought he just mocked it. I don't think he, he was part of the gentleman's agreement. But anyway. He sits his chairs out so they can sit next to each other, and have, each other and have a slap fight. And he even offers Kenny the first shot. And Kenny takes the first shot. And I'm 100% certain that... I, I, John Moxley regretted letting Kenny get the first shot. And by that, I mean, I, I think his real name is Jonathan Good. I think he regretted giving Kenny the first shot because he got drilled in the head. But they start fighting each other in the chairs. And there's a V trigger in the chair. And then they get thrown out of the ring. And there's snapdragons and suplexes. Paradigm shifts and V triggers. And they're, they're both fighting. Uh, Moxley has already hit the paradigm shift twice. Kenny kicked out of it once. But Kenny is going to keep swinging for the one-winged angel and can't get it. And Kenny goes to the top rope, and I am not sure what happened. I think Moxley was supposed to push him off, but before he got there, Kenny legitimately lost his balance and fell. Because Kenny goes to the top rope, and next thing you know, he's flying to the floor without being touched. It was very strange, so they ad-libbed a spot where Moxley suplexed him basically into the giant heaters they had outside because it's 40 degrees in the outside building. And Kenny sells it like death. Docs run out to check on him. Callus leaves the commentary desk to go check on him. You can see the doctor's pointing at something about his eye or his face that it hit the, the burners. He's in deep trouble. But of course, there's a, mo- a match going on. Moxie's got a title to defend, and he hates this guy anyway. So he tears the ref away, throws Kenny into the ring, goes to the mounted punches. Don Callis gets in the mic, pleading. Kenny is hurt. And unfortunately, the mic was not working, I don't think. But you get, to get the visual anyway. He's pleading Kenny is hurt. Stop the match. Pull Mox off. Moxley goes after Callis, lays him out. But in the process, that microphone ends up in the ring. And Kenny grabs it. And he bonks Mox with it. And Mox comes up bleeding. And the announcers are pleading. What happened to the gentleman's agreement? And that wasn't directly the finish. But that was the end of John Moxley. He got zero offense in that point. Omega had a flurry of V-triggers. A one-winged angel. He gets the. He's the. Hits the one-winged angel. Finally, the first time he hits it is the only time he needed it. One, two, three. Kenny Omega is the new champion. Don Callis is ecstatic. So, like I say, a very, very slow start. A very, you know, very funny too. By the way, about that microphone thing. As a mic man myself, how many times have we seen the angle where two guys are having a, a verbal battle, and one guy grabs a mic and thumps the other guy in the head, and that's how the match starts. Yes. This may have been the first time in history that someone used that thump to gig somebody. Yeah. And it led to the demise of a man who has never been beaten in AEW. Yes. From a microphone. So, Omega wins. We'll talk about the post-match in a minute. But the match, like I said, started off slow, was turning around great, and then they go to that finish, and... I guess there's two ways to look at it. If you're intrigued by the change in character, what happens next? You're very excited to tune in next week. But and again, I watched this Thursday, so I knew the, I, I knew I knew Omega was what I knew was that Omega was winning, and then Impact Wrestling had stolen the title. So what I thought they would do was just do a finish, and then like Rich Swan or somebody would come out and steal the belt. So I thought Omega was just going to win, and I am ready for even though he's been a heel. You know, AEW does not do a lot. Does not do a lot of screwy finishes, and this is a moment they've been building to since honestly their very first show, when everyone thought it was Omega and Jericho, and Omega was coming off the hottest New Japan run that had anyone seen in years, and they thought he was going to be the guy, and he didn't win. And at that moment, the build to Omega's title win began. And they've been working on it ever since. Every episode of Impact, every pay-per-view they've done, in one way or another, has been building up to this moment. And the payoff was he got help from an announcer from another company. 
he bonked a guy with a microphone and he won. And I didn't like that. I felt underwhelmed. I was disappointed in what I thought was going to be a great finish to a great wrestling match. Instead, it became WWE light. And then, little did I know, Omega and Callus are celebrating, and they get up and they haul ass. And they get out of that ring, and they go to the back, and they're running through the back with everyone's saying mean things to them. Tony Khan is saying mean things, whoever else is back there. And they're running to the back, and suddenly there's Alex Marvez, who apparently knew this was going to happen, was parked out by the car. He tries to interview them, what's going on, and Dan, Don Callis just says, you can find out Tuesday on Access TV. And Don Callis, you can fuck right off with that. I am not watching Impact Wrestling. Do you understand? I'm not watching Impact Wrestling. I wasted a decade and a half of my life watching Impact Wrestling. It sucked. I'm not watching Impact Wrestling. And AEW, shame on you. Shame on you for lowering yourself to work with Impact fucking Wrestling. I have no idea why you'd want to do this. I have no idea what's in it for you. I have no idea how this benefits you. But I'm appalled and I'm ashamed. Wow. Look at you. I was furious when this went down. Really? Yes. Impact! Well, Vinny, first off, it's only Impact in name. It's a fucking totally different company right now. Dixie's long gone. Russo's long gone. It's actually good! It's They should have changed the name, but it may as well have been Ring of Honor or MLW or any other promotion. This is not the same Impact that almost killed you a decade ago. That's number one. They fucking stole the title, dude. You're mad. Don't be a mark, Vinny. Got to think no, no, about no. this. This is the wrong kind of heat, dude. Listen. I don't, I don't want to watch Dynamite next week. Oh, my God. Listen. Number one, this is not the last match these two are going to have. You either look at it as they're tied, if you consider their first match an official match, or if it wasn't an official match, Omega's beaten him. John Moxley has got a road to the next match. And they're going to do this again. And their next match is probably going to be a match where they pull out all the stops, would be my guess. You're like the only person in the world that hates this, Vinny. Do you realize that? Brian, I'm gonna, I'll be honest with you. I'm biased. I am not a fair man. I'm not an impartial observer. I hate Impact Wrestling. I hate that it still exists. <laughs> yes, it's but a, you're a being unfair because it's not the same company. I know. So, what are you <laughs> mad about? That Impact is still alive. They're surviving to this no, day. No, they're not. They died. TNA died. Now they're Impact Wrestling. They're owned by an owl. Okay? Totally different company. Totally different group of people working there. Dude, I've watched some of the Impact pay-per-views. It's a, it's a good show. It's just a professional wrestling show. That's it. It's no different from any other show. You, you, you cannot look at this as the same impact that was so fucking horrible for all those years. It's totally different now. Different ownership, different wrestlers, different management, different everything. It's not impact anymore, Vinny. Gotta give it some time. Let's see where this goes. I will see what they can do, but I want everyone to know I am not going into this with an open mind. <laughs> wow. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the join button, sign up today. You can also click subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.